Hello and welcome to the 72nd video in this series, Programming a Chess Engine in C. So in this video we're going to go back to looking at protocols before we carry on improving the chess engine. You remember that we've implemented the UCI protocol and the thing about the UCI protocol, if I just remind you of the command, is we always receive a position, say start position, then we receive the moves in this format etc etc for as many moves as there were until now in the game and then we receive a go with the time etc and what's to notice about this kind of protocol is it's essentially a stateless protocol so our engine is not actually sort of a chess playing engine it's a move searching engine it simply gets told what position to start from by setting up this position and making the moves and then gets told to search for a certain amount of time which either is specified or it decides itself by looking at the time remaining for all of the moves. So it's really a, a move searcher or a position searcher rather than a chess playing program. However there is a protocol and it's the other main protocol that's used called the Winboard or Export Protocol and it's officially called the Chess Engine Communication Protocol which I've got on this website here and this describes uh, how this protocol works and it's used for export and winboard which is a really excellent and stable uh, GUI very uh, light on resources that uses this protocol. Winboard also understands the UCI protocol via an adapter and has no problem using UCI engines either, it uses both, but its native protocol is this export protocol and this protocol works completely differently. Now I'm not going to go through all of the documentation here because I'm already pretty familiar with this protocol but the way it works is it'll send you a new command for a new game it'll tell you by say an SD8 that the depth will be 8 after every move it'll send you a time command to tell you how much time you've got left but the moves to go or anything uh, or the total time are sent once at the start by a level command which I'll go into later. So it sets a new game up, tells you all the time controls and then that's it. Then you'll receive something like user move E2 E4 which will be the GOI will say okay the opponent has made E2 E4 and you'll be expected to realize it's now your turn to move therefore your turn to think. So there's no go or anything like this and once you've made your move you then send move and say 75 and then you need to check whether the position is a stalemate, a mate, a draw, whether there's a threefold repetition so you're controlling, you're actually playing a game of chess, your engine is controlling and aware of the game situation whether it's drawn, whether it's mated, how much time it has less left and it's a much better actually a much better way of dealing um, and control, dealing with and controlling uh, I think the game. The, the other thing it really uh, allows to do as well in doing a protocol in this way is it actually allows you to play versus the engine via the console. So in this file export.c which I've created and added to the make file we'll be putting in the export protocol and also a small console protocol to allow the user to play against Vice via the console. So let's get started with that. In this video we're going to just add three small functions in because I've rambled on far too long already about the protocol and we're going to add in the threefold repetition function and this does what it says on the tin every time a move is processed either made by the engine or by the user the engine checks OK is it a threefold repetition it simply loops through all of the keys in our history and increments R if we find the same key as we've currently got on the board and therefore if this function returns 2 then we know we have a threefold repetition the next function we'll be needing is something called draw material and this is a little bit trickier this is where we're going to say that the position is a draw if neither side can give mate and this isn't a theoretical mate so where I don't know you have a position that is a pawn and king versus a king but the pawn is a rook pawn and the king has made it in front of the pawn now that's a theoretical draw with best play but we don't want that here, we want simply, even if an opponent tries to get himself checkmated, he can't. So to step through this, we say if there are pawns on the board, then the opponent can get mated, so because a pawn can promote. 
If there are major pieces on the board, the, oppo the opponent can get one of the sides can get mated, obviously, because rooks and queens deliver mate. If we've got more than two bishops on the board for either side, then two bishops obviously can deliver checkmate, so we'll return false. And also, if we've got two knights on the board, now, and to get mated by two knights, you really have to help the opponent, but it can be done, so again, it's technically not a draw. If we've got a, white, a knight and a bishop on the board for either side, then obviously it's a very famous mating pattern, knight and bishop and king versus king. It's not a draw. Otherwise we can say if there's anything else on the board, which is essentially if one side has just got a knight or the other side has just got a knight or a bishop, then it must be a draw, so we return true. So now the main function there, and this is the function that's called check result. And this gets called every loop inside the protocol. So every time we've loop round, or every time a move is made, or we've made a move, then the first thing that's called is this check result function to check whether the game is a draw. And if so, a command is sent in this format to the GUI to say, I'm claiming a draw. So the first thing is, is the 50 move all over 100? So have we had more than 50 half moves? If so, then before, uh, since the, la the 50 move rule was set back to zero, if we have, then it's a 50 move rule draw. I haven't accounted, however, here for side as well. Um, I've just put this as greater than 100. I think it's slightly inaccurate. We've got threefold repetition here, which we've got from above. If it's greater than or equal to 2, then it's uh, threefold rep. And from the function above, if we have a draw material situation, then we'll claim, whoop, I've put threefold repetition because I copied there. OK, so if none of these is the case, we have to check whether we have a stalemate or a checkmate, uh, checkmate or a stalemate condition. And this should be fairly standard code. We've seen a lot before now. We get our move. We make a move list, generate our moves, and then we loop through all of our moves. And if we find a move, we'll increment found, and we'll br take the move back, and then break here because we don't need to look for any more moves. We found a legal move, so we can't be in check or in stalemate. So the next thing we do is simply say if found is not equal naught, then return false, because remember it doesn't satisfy any of these conditions and we have a legal move so the game isn't over. Otherwise we look to see if we're in check or not and this will determine whether it's a mate or a stalemate. So if we're in check, if it's white to move then black has checkmated us and if it's black to move then white has checkmated us otherwise it must be a stalemate and this return false here is redundant we shouldn't actually ever get to this return false. Okay then, so that's it for this video. That's the implementation of the sort of game over control state for the game board. So in the next video we'll carry on implementing the export protocol. And thanks very much for listening. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.